You want to see crazy? I can show you crazy. She'll call me daddy because she has no clue who her real daddy is. <laughs> yeah, did you drink my Mountain Dew? Did you drink my Mountain Dew? She wanted money after we broke up. I wasn't going to give it to her. She made that video to punish me. Did you cuck me, Des? It's another Thanksgiving ruined by you! Die. Die. Boogie2988 is a notorious lolcow that's been on YouTube since the very beginning. He would mainly be known for his character Francis, who was used to mock himself and new culture in general. Oh, well, fuck a goddamn Mountain Dew! Yeah, did you drink my Mountain Dew? Did you drink my Mountain Dew? Ah! Boogie would also go out to portray himself as a nice guy to the point where he was considered the Fred Rogers of YouTube at one point. But I, I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with two things. I want to leave you with a very heartfelt personal thank you. And this is to everybody who's ever clicked the subscribe button, whether you stayed or you didn't, whether you're part of the million that are here now or just someone who watched for six months. Maybe you found out Francis wasn't real and you decided you hated me. Maybe you saw one of my miserable attempts at trying to be funny and you didn't like it and you, you went away. I, just as long as you were ever part of my life and ever part of this career, thank you. But for those of you who chose to stay, I love you and I hope you stay forever and I hope we can continue to do this until until we're both in the ground. Over time, this facade of being a wholesome guy on YouTube would crumble, and he would pivot into saying that he was just a good guy who liked edgy jokes. I mean, if, if you ask my opinion, or ask one of my friend's opinions, I'm a genuinely good person that likes to fuck around on the internet and likes to make offensive jokes. That's who I am. That's what I am. I treat the people that are in my life with love and kindness and respect, but when I get the opportunity, I like to fuck around on the internet. It's possible to be a very kind and loving and good person, just like I am on my YouTube videos, but still make stupid, goofy, edgy jokes just like I do on Twitter. I know that's possible because that's what I'm doing. I don't know why people insist I have to be one or the other. You either are a perfect person who never makes jokes or you're a bad, evil person who makes jokes so all that good stuff you do is now washed away. Fuck you. People aren't that simple. At least I'm not that simple. Despite this angle trying to say he's a good guy, his views and treatment of women would tell a different story. Before making videos on YouTube, he would run an adult website blog. Boogie would run of this blog with his recommendations for adult videos, but it would also contain his celebrity and political rants. One such rant would be directed at Kelly Pickler from American Idol saying that she was a complete and total slut saying that she went to her prom in a dress with her vagina hanging out. An anonymous commenter would say, that's not her vagina, you idiot. It's her stomach. Boogie would respond with, dude, that's her fucking pubic hair. If you're not smart enough to recognize that, you need to get off the internet and find a real woman for a change. Someone would correct them saying that's the shadow of her stomach, and Boogie would apologize and concede this point, but then go on to say, that's where her pubic hair should be, because on every woman he's ever licked, that's where it started. And he felt the need to also say, oh, and if that's her belly shadow, that makes her fat. Boogie would go on to make a post saying, oh no, I'm stuck in Africa. To summarize this, he would just complain about all the spam messages he would get about women being stuck in Africa and needing help. He would reply with, stay in Africa, get AIDS, and die, you cocksuckers. It sure seems to be an insurmountable amount of attractive white women getting trapped in Africa. Boogie would address this old blog saying that he was upheard by what he signed his name to and the jokes they made on that blog. In 2009, Boogie's mother would pass away and he would fall into a deep depression where he claimed he would almost take his own life. During this time, Boogie would meet a woman named Desiree and they would bond over the fact they both had lost someone close to them. Notably, she was a fan of Boogie's videos prior to them meeting. Life has a way of working out because I met this redheaded girl who saw my videos and she was really sad too because she had just buried her best friend and she had just buried her brother. And we started talking and it was awesome. We were really interested in each other but um, her life was complicated and my life was complicated and we were just too far apart. And we didn't think we could make it work and that kind of sucked. But you know, they say never say never Life has a way of surprising you. Uh, eventually, we managed to work it out, and that red-headed girl moved down here to live with me. We've been together now for three years. We're in love, 
and I'm happier now than I've ever been. They would go on to date for multiple years and Boogie would propose in 2012. They would get married in 2013. By the end of 2017, they would initiate the divorce process and finalize the divorce in 2018. Once the divorce was finalized, Boogie would make a video in 2018 saying he would try to avoid talking about the divorce and his ex-wife. But as of today, it is done. Now, it's been almost a year since we've been divorced and a lot of people ask, Boogie, why do you continue to talk about it? Why do you continue to make videos about it? Um, and, and I don't plan to forward, moving forward, because I think I'm finally at a really good place. Some things I want to say about the last year, because I don't ever want to make another video about it. I probably will have to. You know how the internet is. You know, there's always drama that crops up. Some will say this, some will say that. I'll need to correct this. I'll need to correct that. I'll need to tweet about it. I might have to make a video. So chances are I'll be forced back into talking about it again, but I really don't want to. I want to say everything I have to say. About two months after this video, Boogie would release a video of himself and his character Francis talking to themselves with an effigy of his ex-wife. This video can be viewed in a disturbing light as it seems that Boogie is vocalizing his insecurities through his character Francis and would end the video with him destroying his ex-wife's effigy. You are the most untrustworthy person on the planet. Do you understand that? You're an actual sociopath. You're an actual psychopath. You are the reason she left, okay? And you know that. Yeah, Boogie, I'm why she left. I'm all killed on the reason you found her to begin with, okay? It's another Thanksgiving ruined by you! It's another Easter ruined by you! I really loved you. I really did. And I know you really loved me. Well, I know you loved him. And I know you f***ing hated me. You hated all of it, didn't you? You f***ing hated YouTube. You f***ing hated the fame. You f***ing hated the fans. You hated the trips. When I met you, I was a 600 pound man on disability. All right? Look at me now. Look at me now. And you know what? You're the one who did that. You're the one who did that. You're the one that came into our life when we had given up, when we had given up hope, we'd given up on ourselves, we'd given up on our career, we'd given up on our job. And you took us out of that bed where we were ready to die. And you helped us work every single day. You helped us develop me, not just Boogie, as a person, not just me as a character, but you taught us how to live when we were ready to die. And everything we have, we owe to you. Does that make you feel good? Does that make you feel superior? Does that make you feel loved? Because it made me f***ing hate you. You want to see crazy? I can show you crazy. Boogie would go on to say to not read too much into it and that he just needed a reason to go psycho in the series. For many, it seemed to be odd timing that his divorce was just finalized and this would happen two months later. Later, Boogie would appear on the podcast and at some point discuss his divorce, revealing that his wife had to walk on eggshells around him. On a later livestream, he would also clarify that his relationship was not perfect and they fought regularly. Uh, we were in a, a loop in which my anxiety was so bad mm. that she was kind of walking on eggshells <clears throat> all the time because she was afraid of, of, of scaring me, upsetting me, hurting me. Mm. And that the way she reacted to um, my anxiety was very frequently with fight or flight. Mm. Um, and for her, that mostly meant fight. So I would become anxious over something. And when I become anxious, I'd become a little angry. I'd become a little edgy. Mm. Not abusive or any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, no, you but just become... like, it's like I, I need to focus on this right now. I need to be left alone. Let me focus on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And that would be enough to make her feel bad. And then when sure. she would feel bad, she would become um, uh, angry or upset or uh, anxious or sad or whatever. And so then that would make me feel more anxious. And then that would make her feel more anxious. So I know, I mean, we ended up like this, like, I know exactly what effect, you mean. Yeah. Right? And so what we really need... Was me and my wife's relationship perfect? No. Did we argue from time to time? Yes. I think most couples do. 
Did I ever stand and scream in her face about fucking, you know, tell her she was, I wish she was fucking dead or, you know, I don't know. On Boogie's 35th birthday, he would call his ex-wife on a live stream, leading to multiple awkward moments and revelations of their past relationship. I made it to 45. What do you think about that? It's impressive. Yeah, I didn't think I would. Only another 40 to go. Another 40, Des? Do you hate me that much <laughs> that you want me to live to be 90 fucking 85? Uh, uh, story about how you picked a fight with me about oh. how I never watch your videos anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I was working like 60 hour weeks. I know. Like, you, don't was, even, you don't even care about so... my videos. You don't even watch them. Like, what are you talking about? I help you film them all the time. Yeah, I was and like, why are we arguing about this? I'm dying right now. They have like this crazy picture of you and I and like what happened. The, did you cuck me, Des? Did I cuck you? Yeah, did you did you did you screw TJ behind my back or whatever? What TJ? It's because Remington isn't attractive, but TJ was hot as shit. I mean he's like, you know, like he's a he's a gay guy who takes really good care of himself. At the end of the day, confirm or deny this, let's see what you think. We got divorced just because it wasn't working. Right. Is that pretty much it? We just weren't happy. Pretty much it. We were going down a path where we just were not clicking and we were fighting and we were resenting each other for things and I didn't want that to be the end of our story where we spent the next 20 years of our lives hating each other, you know? Yep, absolutely. All right, well, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you still. Thank you for being such a good friend. I really appreciate you. Some would view this as emotionally manipulative that he called his ex-wife on his birthday and leading to multiple discussions that would reveal that he was potentially verbally abusive. While Boogie's divorce was ongoing, he would engage in a relationship with a cam girl named Lucy Fox. The relationship wouldn't last long, but Lucy Fox would later release a video claiming that Boogie was verbally abusive and emotionally manipulative. He was on a website. I'm not going to say what kind of website, but you can probably figure it out. And I, you know, thought, oh, this must be a joke. Like, so since I have been a fan of said asshole <laughs> for many years, I decided, okay, well, he can't be a bad guy. So I'll just go over and see how it is. Um, you know, since I was a fan and I thought, oh, well, you know, Nothing bad will come out of it, you know, because, you know, everyone thinks he's such a great guy. Asshole was nice at first, <laughs> as most assholes are. And I thought, well, you know, let's see how it goes. You know, he seems like a nice guy. He was, you know, going through some stuff, so I thought I would be there for him and help him through some stuff. So that's what I did. You know, I would go over to his house every day. I'd take care of him, have him talk about, you know, his issues and, you know, all the hate he was getting and blah, 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 blah. And I kind of just listened to it, you know, and one thing led to another and we started forming a relationship. Um, he was dealing with some emotional problems and dealing with, you know, his own shit. <clears throat> and I was pretty much taking care of him every day. I, um, if you know what I do for a job, then you know I have to be at home <clears throat> in order to be on cam. Well, I couldn't do that because it would turn into an argument every time I tried to leave. Um, why are you trying to leave me? You know I need somebody right now. Blah, 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 you know. I'd wait for him to finish up doing his work and whatever, and pretty much I was not making any income. I was scraping to get by, to be honest with you. Um, like I'd ask him, hey, can I put some money into my bank account so I wouldn't get an overdraft? Okay, well, here's, you know, 20 bucks. Cool. So I would do that and then, you know, I have bills to pay, you know. I don't want to get into detail about my personal life because I know none of you really give a shit. But um, I was dealing with some stuff on my own, but that was never important. Things were good at the beginning. But 
it got to the point where every night I'd go home in tears because asshole thought it was a good idea to scream at me, you know, about everything. Oh, you're not, you know, you're not here enough. You, you aren't, you know, you're just fucking annoying and, and you just don't want to listen to me, blah, 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 blah. You know, you don't mean shit to me. You don't mean shit. You're just a fucking piece of shit. Okay, well, thanks. Appreciate it. But at the end of the day, we did have an emotional connection, and he did care about me until the day he decided that he was just going to continuously scream and yell at me every single day, and I got tired of it. I got tired of being treated like I was dirt on the side of the road. And I was tired of being treated like I was less than. What I went through was what I went through was was some <sighs> what I went through is something nobody should have to endure. And the fact that I know that <laughs> he's he's doing this to other people, to other girls that are younger than me makes me very upset. Boogie would go on to say that they were all lies, that she just wanted money, and go on to explain how well he treated his ex-wife with the money he had. What about the other video that a girl made about you? She was lying through her fucking teeth. Listen to that video. Go watch that video. She literally complains about money 98% of the time of the video. She was mad that she didn't get money from me. She got mad that she didn't get enough money from me. She wanted money after we broke up. I wasn't going to give it to her. She made that video to punish me. As simple as that. I just like to think, but why did she say those things in particular? Because she knew that would be the most damaging to me. Because she thought that would be the most damaging to me. I think she knew if she said the R word, which thank God she didn't. Um, I think that she accused me of rape. That wouldn't seem likely or even possible as fat and ugly as I was. Which is a good thing because the way I was built then and the way I'm built now, I don't think I could force myself on somebody. So I think, I think she understood that accusing me, if she was going to make something up, I think she was smart enough to know that accusing me of was not something that was going to stick. And I also think that she is, um, I also think that she's kind enough of a person where she wouldn't want to damage other women by saying So thank God she didn't say Praise God that she didn't say Because Because I, I, at that point, I, I, I don't know what I would have fucking done. I, I, you know, she was going to make some shit up. Thank God she didn't say right. Thank God. But I think emotionally abusive was what the subreddit already thought about me. They already thought I emotionally abused my ex-wife. And she was reading that subreddit every day after we broke up. So I think the reason she said that I was emotionally abusive was because that's what they already believed. And it would be the fastest path to sucker them into it. I mean, look at what I did for my ex-wife. I was on fucking disability when I met my ex-wife. I got to work on YouTube and made her over a million fucking dollars, dude. I flew her all across the country from the East Coast to the West Coast. We went and visited her family for two weeks at a time, twice a fucking year. She got to meet her favorite author, her favorite musician. She got to meet Brandy. I mean, I gave that girl the world. Now... Admittedly, I was still a pretty shitty husband. <laughs> I was definitely pretty fucking fat and unable to do a lot of stuff. But the one thing I could do, I did. The one thing I could do, which was make money, and I did. Like, go watch the video and see what she complains about. She asked for money. I didn't give it to her. And that was it. She asked for money after we broke up. I didn't give it to her. Why not just give her the money? Because I don't deal with fucking terrorists, man. I don't deal with terrorists. Fuck that shit. We, you and I aren't dating anymore. You don't get any of my help or my money. I broke up with you for a reason. And it doesn't matter that you, you tell me, I'm gonna go, I'll am gonna. i make a video about you and ruin your career. Then ruin my fucking career. Do it. I don't, I don't negotiate with terrorists, man. I do not negotiate with terrorists. If you threaten me and you, I'm going to make a video, I'm going to show up at your house. Fucking do it, pussy. Fucking do it, pussy. You ain't getting shit from me. Do your shit. I am, I'm not here to pay nobody. I ain't here to pay nobody. I'm not here to be fucking extorted. You fucking, you threaten me, fucking step. <laughs> bring your, bring on your shit. 
In the end, not much would come out of the Lucy Fox situation, but it would begin establishing a pattern of behavior from Boogie. Starting in 2018, Boogie would claim that he'd spent close to $200,000 on sex workers. You know the rules. The rules are we're gonna go out and eat. We're gonna have dinner. Maybe we're gonna fuck. And you're gonna enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. The women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA tens. With sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tens and I think that's cool. Uh, but then it's window shopping, right? Like any other meat market like Tinder, you kind of scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you. I think this girl's really cute. Oh yeah, yeah. She's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for, but there's nothing wrong with that. He would essentially view women as objects and sexual conquests that he would just have to pay for. This viewpoint would draw the ire of Moist Critical, leading him to make a video on Boogie with a segment discussing this. Why do you deserve that? Because you filmed your 20th Francis chugging Mountain Dew while pooping his pants and putting popcorn in a microwave video? Like what? what? It's such a deranged mindset that he believes he is entitled to all of these women wanting to slobber on his meat because he is a famous YouTuber. He, he shouldn't be settling for an Arkansas 8. No, he deserves the LA 10s. So he pays for sex workers because Boogie deserves that top shelf pussy with the pinky out. And to me, this audacity is alarming. To me, this screams that he only views women as objects to be conquered sexually. He shouldn't be settling for something that's an Arkansas 8. That's beneath him. Have they looked at his subscriber count? No. What he deserves is the LA 10s. So he gets into the sugar baby community. But the point is, you don't deserve anything. To speak here like you deserve these women, you are entitled to these women because of your online success is so delusional. And speaking of delusion, him criticizing the lady for being thicker than he would normally go for is just downright ridiculous and absurd. It just really seems like with the way he speaks about women throughout the documentary, he just views them as sexual props for his own pleasure. Really, that's the most important thing when it comes to women for him. Over the years, Boogie would have multiple moments on live streams where he would make off-the-cuff comments about sex workers and sex in general. Why do I have two beds? One for me and one for my hooker! One for me and one for my hooker! One for me and one for my hooker! One for me and one for the hooker! One for me and one for my hooker! Welcome one to the sub club! One for the hooker! One for me and 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 one for the hooker! Yeah! 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 Welcome to the sub club! Take it, bitch! Take it! finished already I'm sorry guys he's got to lick them right where they pee from like this <laughs> die die yeah. Okay, well, wow, that was weird. Um, that, that could be a cue. Someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> you splay that fucker just right, you can wrap it all around your fingers. You just gotta, you gotta shave real thin. <laughs> Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most fun thing I've said in a while. By 2023, any illusion and facade of Boogie being the Fred Rogers of the internet has been long dead. This year, Boogie would reveal his new girlfriend in a teaser. This would immediately lead to questions of how they met, and he would reveal that they were trauma bonding. He would go on to say they bonded off their past traumas to help them heal and then realize they were compatible. This would come off as odd as he had met his wife the same way as they both bonded over terrible losses in their life. 
He would then reveal her age, that she was 20. This would be especially concerning as Boogie was nearly 50. He would also reveal that they started DMing when she was 19. In the past, Boogie would comment that someone in their 30s would not have anything in common with someone in their 20s. How young is too young, hammer. Boogie? Do what? How young is too young, Boogie? Gotta know. So that's interesting, um, because I've gone out with a few girls who are kind of young, 20-year-old 20 20 year since the divorce, so it's been nice. Um, but uh -huh. uh, I think I think too young is age of consent. I think if they're, if they're not in the age of consent in at least your region, you're definitely breaking the law. Oh. Dating a 20-year-old, going out, even just going out one time with a 20-year-old is hard enough. I can't imagine a fucking 18-year-old. And I think the age of consent in Arkansas might might actually be less than 18. I know in some state it's 16. What the fuck do you have in common with a 16-year-old if you're in your 20s or your 30s? God bless your 40s. A 20-year-old girl is hard enough to date because they only know three things and they're wrong about all three of them. But now that Boogie's dating someone that's 20 years old, he doesn't think it's a problem because he believes he can help her due to his experience. Emotionally, you can be an extremely difficult person and can bring a lot of baggage into another partner's life. Do you think that it's fair to do that to a 19-year-old? Do you not see the predatory nature of dating a 19-year-old as a middle-aged man? Okay, so she's not 19. I don't know where people are getting that from. Um, she was 19 when she wrote me at first, but we were, she was 20 by the time we started like officially dating, and certainly in well into her 20s by the time we actually met. Yeah. So that said, I feel like I'm in the best place in my life. And I know the path that she needs to go down to get over like all of the things that she's been through. So I feel like I can help her with that. Another aspect to this is that she was also a fan of Boogie prior to messaging him. The violence and stress impacted me where now I have uh, anxiety, but it wasn't just from that. It was definitely a part of just like growing up. I've had a lot of trials and errors and just like things go wrong. So, so I originally discovered Boogie on YouTube. My, okay, my initial impression of Boogie was he's adorable. I'm. I just, I don't know what it was. It was, I guess it's his energy, his, his curly hair, his glasses. I'm, I must be into nerds. It's, I guess, I don't know. I, I never really paid attention to like my feelings or anything cause I kind of like kept to myself in school. So like, I don't know, he's just adorable to me. I like him. Another odd coincidence in this whole thing is that she shares a name with Boogie's ex-wife. This would be odd as they have a lot of similarities now where they share the same name they both bonded with Boogie due to ongoing trauma or past trauma, and they were both fans of Boogie prior to meeting with him. Something Boogie's girlfriend would bring up during a documentary she was in was that she did not have a father figure while growing up. I don't have a good relationship with my father. I don't really call him my father. Come sperm donor, but uh, this don't have to be put into the documentary. I just, I don't re reference him as father to me. He's never really been my father. He signed his rights away, or my rights away, whenever I was... 20 months old or was it 18 months old? I think it was 18 months old. He signed his rights away from us. So I don't, I never really had a good father role figure in my life. It didn't make me feel good. It, it hurt a lot. I just, I definitely just wanted that father figure and that role and just didn't ever have it. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. Like you just don't have that, that, that support system that you would and the advice that you need. And so it's just difficult. During a podcast, Boogie would answer a hypothetical question about a woman he would choose. And he would say he would choose a woman with no father because she would have daddy issues. He would jokingly say that he could take advantage of that and make her do whatever he wanted. And a girl like Ray, she doesn't just have daddy issues. She's got mommy issues, too. She doesn't know who the fuck her family is, all right? If you show her the slightest amount of kindness and Finn did, you know you can wrap that girl around your little finger. She's going to give you everything you want, okay? To retread this ground, but I just want to be honest with you. I know that I can go full-on job of the hut with that girl because she's going to let me chain her up, put her in that slave lay outfit, and do whatever I want to. And you know what? She'll call me daddy because she has no clue who her real daddy is. <laughs> Boogie and his current girlfriend would appear in Jabba the Hutt and Leia cosplays for Halloween. The biggest concern between Boogie's and his current girlfriend's age gap is emotional maturity. She would comment that even if Boogie cheated on her, he would stay with him no matter what. Because I don't want to be alone, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's hard. 
What, what's getting you so emotional? Because I love him and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> I do. I do love him. I truly love him. Have you ever loved anyone like this? <laughs> not, not really, no. No, I haven't. What about the people who say you're, these are fake tears, you're all in it for the clout? Let them say it. I don't care. You know, if that's what they think, that's what they think. At the end of the day, I know how I feel. I'm not breaking up with him. If he broke up with me, that's different, but I'm never gonna find a reason to break up with him. Sorry, I'll, I'll repeat all that. What was the question? So if he cheated, I'm not gonna break up with him because I love him and it's gonna hurt, yeah. We're gonna talk about it, but I know at the end of the day he loves me, so. It would, it, it would, to see him with, okay, to see Boogie with another woman, it would hurt and it would make me jealous, but I'd get it. Women are beautiful, so. For some, this relationship appears to be Boogie taking advantage of someone that is emotionally immature to handle this sort of relationship at this point in their life. To Boogie, she is legally a consenting adult who is choosing to be in this relationship with him. Despite the legality of it, many are concerned about the age gap, especially because of Boogie's history with women and his public reputation of trying to emotionally manipulate both his audience and people in his life. Ultimately, Boogie's history with women is only some insight into the true character of Boogie2988. As always, thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and thank you for all my members, and a special shout out to Francisco Ramos Mejia.